Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Red Bank Public Library and our program called Family Story Times on Race and Diversity. I'm Sierra Williams. I'm the children's librarian here and I'm so glad that you are here with me because I think this is going to be a great program. Um, I'm going to start, start with some peace and love today. I always end with it and I'll end with it again today, but I want to give you some peace and love Take some, take a lot. Here's some more and some more and some more. Take a lot, a lot, a lot and pass it on because the world really needs it right now. There's so many things going on in the world. I hope that your family is having continuing conversations about all of the major things that are going on in the world. Um, that's what this program is all about. It's Black History Month this month. And I have a great book that I'm excited to read for you today. It's called Go Forth and Tell. It's the life of Augusta Baker, librarian and master storyteller. And now you know why I like this book so much. Um, it's a brand new book. It's hot off the presses. And it's important for me to read it to you today for two reasons. Number one, it is Black History Month, and this is some good black history. It's a true story. And number two, it's because of her quote. That's actually part of the title. Her quote is, children of all ages wanna hear stories. And so she said, select well, prepare well, and then go forth and tell. And so, I'm gonna go forth and tell her story. It's an important one and I'm proud to share it with you today. Um, it's important because her work was not just as a librarian, but it was really her efforts to make sure that the children who came to her library could relate to the books that were available to them. And so that is a number one priority for me as the person who gets to pick all of the books and buy all of the books that land in this children's room. I want every kid in Red Bank to come here and feel like they're welcome. That there are books here that reflect their experience that they can relate to. And so no matter what language they speak, where they originally are from, um, what color they are, what they're into as far as what their interests are, um, how they identify. They need to come to this library and know that they will find something here that reflects their experience. And every kid deserves that. It's not fair. It's not fair otherwise. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today. Because um, not every book is for everybody. That's true. There's thousands of books in here. And not every book is for everybody. And that's okay. Um, but there's got to be something here that's for you. And the thing about it is, it's important for those kids to find things that they can relate to, but it's also important for other kids to read books about different kinds of people, right? Every kid needs to know that there are different kinds of people in the world. People that come from different cultures, that eat different foods, whose families may look different than theirs, um, and who do different things. And that it's all okay. It's all okay. And so everybody needs to have access to all of these different stories so that we can relate to each other. What you find out when you read and read and read is that you discover over and over and over again that even though we're different, we're alike in so, so, so many ways, right? That's the beauty of reading. And so let's go ahead and read our story. Before I do, I wanna give you a preview of what we're gonna talk about afterwards. We're gonna continue this conversation because it's relevant to our story, but I'm gonna introduce you to this. 
What do you think about that? I'm going to tell you how it relates to what we're talking about after we read, but maybe it's a good hint for you to go get a snack before I read. Just put this video on pause. Go get something that you like to eat so you can sit and listen to this wonderful story. Again, it's called Go Forth and Tell, The Life of Augusta Baker, Librarian and Master Storyteller. It's by Brianna J. McDaniel and illustrated by April Harrison. These illustrations are really, really nice. I like them a lot. So keep your eye on them while I read. Show you the title page while I scooch around here. And here we go. Augusta Braxton Baker grew up to be a master storyteller, but before that, she was an amazing story listener. Growing up in Baltimore, it didn't matter whether she was sitting at the kitchen table or walking to the store or relaxing under a tree. When her storytelling grandmother started her tales, Augusta stopped, stuck out her eager ears, and listened. Her grandmother's lilting, tilting voice shaped incredible worlds and passed them down to Augusta. Through that voice, she traveled to where Br'er Rabbit laughed in briar patches and where Arthur gallivanted with Excalibur. These are classic stories she was listening to. In these worlds, people who started out discarded and mistreated became heroes who slayed dragons or used their smarts to get themselves out of trouble. These stories taught Augusta that where there's a will, there's a way. And she never, ever forgot that. Augusta was enchanted by words and the way they could change how she thought and learned. Could she become a storyteller too? Could her stories help other people become better listeners? It was time to find out. Augusta pocketed her grandmother's stories and took her own lilting, tilting voice to a teacher's college in Albany, New York. In school, one of her teachers taught a lesson on folk stories. Augusta's grandmother's tales jumped joyfully to the front of her mind and Augusta knew they were part of a bigger story a story of movement and courage. The tales begged to be plucked from her memories and retold. Augusta knew that her calling was to be in front of a crowd, raising her voice and guiding children of all ages through the wild and wonderful spaces of her stories. That calling took her to the 135th Street branch of the New York Public Library in Harlem, where Augusta became a children's librarian, happily sharing stories with others in her community. Many of the children Augusta served in Harlem were African-American, but there were hardly any books with black people in them. The ones that the library did have were rude, mean, and just plain wrong. Augusta realized that there was a lot of work to do, but where there's a will, there's a way. She knew that the eager listening ears of young solemn James Baldwin and poetry-loving Audre Lorde deserved to hear stories where they laughed and gallivanted. So these young children grew up to be very famous authors themselves. It says she knew 
They could one day tell their own stories if she only showed them how. This is James Baldwin, and I'm going to read you this quote. It says, I often wonder what I'd do if there weren't any books in the world. And this is Audre Lorde, and her quote says, If I didn't define myself for myself, I would be crunched into other people's fantasies for me and eaten alive. Augusta decided to use her voice, not just to share, to share stories she already knew, but to search out new ones and even create some of her own. Augusta remembered how the heroes in her grandmother's stories sometimes started out at the bottom, but would rise up. She wanted black children to have heroes that rose up and looked and talked and shined bright, just like them. She created the James Weldon Johnson Memorial Collection at the 135th Street branch to showcase honest, caring depictions of black folks. And she shared and published her lists so countless others could learn from them. She went out of her way to support educators, librarians, and writers, and they supported her too. Educators like Carter G. Woodson, the father of Black History and founder of Black History Month, and librarians like Augusta's colleague in Chicago, Charlemagne Rollins, the first Black president of the American Library Association's Children's Division. Authors and artists like John Steptoe, Virginia Hamilton, Tom Feelings, and Walter Dean Myers, who created stories for and about Black people, sharing their lives and experiences around the globe. Eventually, Augusta became the coordinator of children's services in all of the New York Public Library branches. She was the very first black person to ever hold that position. Can I tell you something? New York has a lot a lot of libraries. Let's see on the map. Known as the mistress of storytelling, Augusta traveled all over the country, giving people her gifting people her time and her stories. It didn't matter where she was, teaching classes at Columbia University, hosting a radio show, or on the set of Sesame Street. Here's her quote. Let the story tell itself. Select well, prepare well, and then go forth and just tell. As one journalist said, wherever Augusta went, she painted worlds with her words. Full, bright worlds for the children who will make our own world whole. In 1980, Augusta accepted a job created just for her as the master storyteller in residence at the University of South Carolina. To this day, the city of Columbia honors her with an annual festival called A Baker's Dozen. A is for Augusta. There, under trees and tents with food and friends, griots and authors, tell tales, shining a bright light and painting a more brilliant, bold world with their words. Go have a listen, says. We could go to that festival and visit South Carolina. And then in the back of the book, there's a timeline 
She was born in 1911. Boy, that's over 100 years ago. But she lived until 1998. And that was not that long ago. And so she made such an impact and made a difference for so many young children of color. Do you see that her whole career was focused and um, working toward getting those books in the library that children could relate to? It's so, so important and such a beautiful thing. And we finally got into a place through her work which was revolutionary and the work of so many others, we seem to have gotten to a place where there are so many more books. You can see the books behind me that are written by and for and about people of color and other marginalized communities. And they are available, but we've also gotten to a place where somehow that um, concerns people and there are people in our country who are trying to ban uh, books in libraries and schools. And it's very upsetting. It's very upsetting and it's not where we wanna be. So this is where the illustration that I have for you comes in. Take a look at this again. And let's take a look at what I have here. I've got an egg some chocolate, which I might take a bite of after I'm done recording this, some delicious strawberries, I think they're delicious, some peanut butter, mm, I can't even get the spoon out, some peanut butter, and a glass of milk. All looks good to me, but do you know that some people are allergic to peanut butter? I think you know that, because at school, Sometimes those kids can't even have lunch with you. They're so allergic to peanut butter that really some people can die if they're exposed to it and they don't get medical attention. Same thing with milk. You know, a lot of people are lactose intolerant. It makes their tummies sick. Eggs and chocolate. Dogs can't eat chocolate. It's not good for them. That can really be harmful. And some people are allergic to strawberries. They break out in hives and rashes. So this is my question for you. Should we stop growing strawberries? Should we stop selling milk and peanut butter in the store and eggs and chocolate? Should we ban them for everybody because some people can't have them? We don't do that. We don't do that. You know what we do? They're in the store. If you can't have them, if you're not able to eat peanut butter, if you can't eat strawberries, you don't buy them. You just walk on by, right? But they're still available for the people that do like them. They're still available. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Just avoid it yourself and let other people have the freedom to enjoy them the way they want to. And so that's how I want you to think about books. Like I said, there's thousands of books here in the library. They're not for everybody, but there's something here for everybody and that's okay. I wanna show you some of the books that have been challenged and banned in some places or attempted to be banned. Solway by Lupita Nyong'o. The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander. The Proudest Blue by Ibtihaj Muhammad. And here's another one, Before She Was Harriet by Lisa Klein Ransom. I chose these books to show you because these are books that we've read in this program. I've read them to you. They're here in this library. They're beautiful books. They're written by, for, and about people of color 
And to me, there's absolutely zero reason why they should be challenged or banned. But it's happening. And I want you to know about it. And I would like for you to talk about it. Um, freedom and justice and fairness are American values. The word for today is tolerance. That's a word I want you to look up. To be tolerant is to be accepting of others and other things, even though they may be different from yourself or your beliefs. Be tolerant. Be tolerant. This, these books are staying in this library. I hope you come and check them out and read them for yourself um, because you can learn and grow by doing that. And when we restrict people's ability to read and have access to materials that open up new worlds and experiences to them, then we are losing our connection to other people. And it's terrible because when we lose that connection and that ability to, to realize that we are more alike than different, then we leave room for misunderstanding, for miscommunication, for miseducation. And then we have an increase in racism and discrimination and anti-Semitism and all the isms that just spiral out of control and separate us and divide us. And that's not the direction that we wanna go in at all, at all. So protecting freedom of speech, the freedom and the right to read. When you learn how to read, you kids know this, it is, you do get a sense of freedom and joy because you can do it all by yourself. You don't need your mom and dad to say, hey, what is, mom, what does this mean? What does this say? No, you can read it by yourself. And when you can read by yourself, you can learn anything. You can learn anything. And it's fantastic. And so reading is freedom. It's a freedom that we need to protect and um, encourage. And so... I hope that you'll talk about it and encourage your family, your friends, your communities to support libraries, teachers, schools, writers, um, and defend free speech and intellectual freedom. All right? Don't forget to spread some peace and love while you do that. Please, please. And celebrate Black History Month. I made my sign out of Black History Month colors. Red, green, and black. And it's yellow. And um, what do I want to tell you? The theme for this year's Black History Month is African Americans and the arts. So when you think of art, you can think of anything. From fine art in a museum to music to dance, to theater, to films, um, to literature, of course, and books. There's a million ways to celebrate Black History Month this month. Um, do it, enjoy it, learn, grow, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.